The year is 2020. Every month, everything is shit. The world is falling apart. The world is in fear and chaos. The world is... Fuck that. 2020 blows a lumpy penis, and I don't mean the good kind. Let's go back to a time that was fucking tits as fuck. Let's go back to the motherfucking 80s. In 1983, there was, again, Star Wars, Scarface, the fucking, the the girls just want to have fun song, which we all know we sing in private and it gets stuck in our head all the time because it's fucking classic. Now, in 1983, there was a lot of really cool shit that's a part of our current pop culture, including the fucking games. Arcades were fucking booming and cool as shit. Don't tell me you weren't fucking begging your parents for that fucking pepperoni mouse pizza and fucking tokens from Chuck E. Cheese's. You fucking loved that shit. Along with those arcades, obviously in 1983, had some really fucking cool games. Hello? Dragon Slayer? Asteroids? No? Fine. Maybe you don't care. But along with all those iconic games was the classic and famous as ball sack game, Super Mario Bros. And as you guessed it, we're not here to talk about fucking any of them. You guys are probably wondering why I spent time talking about all of this stuff from 1983 for a video about a game that came out in 1985. Well, I wanted to kind of set the backstory for what led up to one of the, if not the most iconic game in the history of like fucking ever. Without 1983 and the original arcade Marios, Super Mario Bros. on NES, Nintendo as a company, and consoles probably wouldn't exist in the same way we know and love to this day. So I'm doing this thing where I play all them old video games from my childhood leading up till now and I wanted to ask this question Are they still good? So first off, I wanted to start with my first game at three years old in 1994 But since I suck at subways, let's just uh, let's just dive. Let's just dive right the fuck in huh? So in the first second of playing this game for the first time since I was a child, just fuck. The feelings of nostalgia and the warmth that overcame me was just, oh my lordy fucking, the section of the boxes, the fucking music, just the placement of everything. Just the nostalgia rolling in. It was kind of like fucking, it was kind of like when they gave all that nostalgia from from Star Wars 7 and they were just, you know, I don't know. It just made my heart really warm and it's just brought back a lot of memories that felt really fucking good just to be back. The fucking music. (sighs) Super Mario Brothers music is so good that 35 years later, it is still a recognizable part of our pop culture today. We know that the fucking music is amazing. We know that this game is iconic, but what are the bad parts about this game? Well, first off, the story. Well, there isn't really a story. There's more of like a moral? Basically, the game's creator, Shukuri Miyafoto, wanted to give all the boys a life lesson, and it's this. Try hard as fuck over and over, and she'll keep teasing you with all of your efforts, but never give up, because one day you're gonna get the ooh woo kitty fuck time. So basically, Super Mario Brothers was the blueprints for all the simps out there. I promise, one day, if you keep donating and white knighting, the e-girl is going to love you. So, okay, great. That's not really a story. Games of that era didn't really need a great story to be great. So what did Super Mario Brothers do right? Well, for one, the controls are the opposite of tight. They're like a floppy running mistake from last night that you wake up next to, and then you have this existential crisis where you've got to go and ask yourself, oh fuck, do I have a fucking drinking problem? Oh fuck. At first I thought, gee, this was a complete oversight, getting frustrated over some of the you know, missteps and failings and falls throughout the game. I started to reflect on this with one of my friends, Dr. Sensual Potato PhD. Yeah, that's his name, and you can find both of us on Twitch. But we started to discuss how games of this era use these ploys because they had to. We're used to platformers of today being straightforward, predictable, and easy as fuck. I went into replaying this classic with the modern platforming mindset and got my ass fucking handled. Games back then had to use difficulty and patience along with mastery in order to add meat and girth to their 
fucking otherwise short game. Some of us gotta compensate for stuff. <laughs> this makes me really appreciate where games were then, the beautiful evolution to where they are now, and how refreshing it is to have a completely different experience by revisiting the classics. So, all in all, is it still good? Yes. There's a sense of accomplishment when you fuck on your first set of hammer balls that were shitting on your face for like nine and a half fucking deaths. When you get to finally butt hump that piece of shit cloud fucker for the first time. Yeah, fuck you, bitch. But holy fuck, this game is fucking hard. Throw some of the really hard cheap ass shit at the second to last level that makes you want to fucking quit the game and never fucking finish. Fuck!